So, guys, Hell Let Loose is now over a year old, and it's still going strong. In fact, this week, the devs just released a new content roadmap for the rest of 2020 and beyond. So the question is then, if you're a new player and you're just discovering this game now, is it actually still worth jumping into? Well, guys, this is Billy Eat Worlds again, and let's find out. All right, guys, how you going? Welcome to the video. And like I said today, we're going to take another deep dive into the state of Hell Let Loose in 2020. But just before we do that, though, for the benefit of all of you new guys, if you haven't already had a chance to play this game yet, well, in a nutshell, it's basically a 50 versus 50 tactical shooter set in a World War II theme. Most importantly, Hell Let Loose is a really good example of a mid-core game. You'll notice the damage model is super quick, and there's not as many HUD elements on screen like you'd see in other shooters. But unlike true hardcore tactical shooters, like for example Squad, it's still got fairly quick respawns, and even some basic spotting features as well. Really, the kind of player that this game is aimed at is someone who's come from more of an arcade shooter background, like for example, COD or Battlefield, that might be looking for a more immersive experience. And that's really where this game shines. The weapons and the cosmetics are all authentic, and all of the maps are designed using aerial photography of real World War II battlefields. It's not completely realistic, but that's not the point. Like I said, it's supposed to feel immersive, but not to the extent of being a military simulation, which is something that I think turns a lot of people off more serious shooter franchises like Squad and Postscriptum. Hell Let Loose is just a lot easier for pretty much anyone to jump into. Now, another thing that I think is really important to point out before we go too much further is that this is actually the debut title of Black Matter Studios, a small indie studio that managed to get this game off the ground through a Kickstarter campaign. And I think the reason it's really important to acknowledge that is because it's getting harder and harder to tell that this actually is an indie game. Like I said, so much has changed in the last year. Not only have the devs added more features, but as a result of multiple major systems overhauls, the game looks, sounds, and plays better than it ever has before. And once again, it's not perfect. For example, just recently, the last major update introduced a ton of bugs, but unlike a lot of studios these days, they actually go through and fix these issues pretty quickly. Now, I think part of the reason they're able to do this where so many other studios aren't is because this is the studio's debut game. They're not dealing with technical debt, which in a nutshell is the laundry list of problems from the previous game studios need to deal with. And so maybe as time goes on, maybe if we see a Hell Let Loose 2, we might see them falling into the trap of making promises they can't keep. But so far, Black Matter have been really good at delivering regular updates about every six weeks. And speaking of updates, well, another thing I think the team handles exceptionally well is communicating with players. They release weekly blogs that quite often feature info on work in progress features, which if you haven't already realized, isn't something that AAA studios put out to the public. And that builds a level of trust between the players and the dev team, because even when they do make a mistake, they'll show you why, and they'll show you how they're gonna fix it. Now, with all of that being said, obviously, like any game, it does have its issues, and I think a pretty good measure of how bad issues are in a game is how frustrated you get playing the game day to day. And like I said before, probably the most self-evident and frustrating thing at the moment are a few bugs from the last update that are causing crashing and performance issues on a couple of the maps. But putting that aside though, going back a year ago, probably the biggest issue a new player would have had with this game is that there were only a handful of maps, which to be honest, were actually kind of unbalanced. And since then, not only have the devs added in a bunch of new maps, but they've also overhauled a lot of the other ones. And in the current roadmap that just came out this week, there's even plans to overhaul some more. Now, speaking of maps, well, one downside I should point out is that although there are a lot more in the game now, one of the major issues from my perspective is that they're all pretty similar. Obviously, Hell Let Loose just doesn't have the budget of big AAA games like Battlefield 5 to throw into creating assets. And so what you will find is that a lot of the maps look almost the same. 
One of the things the devs have built in to kind of make up for this is a dynamic objective system, which basically means that every time you play a map, the objectives will spawn at different locations. But at the end of the day, even though the layouts of the maps changed, you will still get sick of looking at the same French countryside round after round, which is obviously a pretty big downside and something the devs need to look at fixing sooner rather than later. Now, the good news is, like I said, Black Matter doesn't really have a lot of technical debt and they know what needs to be improved. And with each update, the things that I'm frustrated about, well, they're kind of getting dealt with. And like I said, there's a new roadmap, which looks like it's gonna knock off a few more things from my list. For example, in the last update, the devs completely overhauled ballistics to use a projectile physics system. And before the end of the year, we're also gonna have a bullet penetration system as well. And not just that, but the roadmap mentions that the next thing they'll be completely overhauling is the logistic system, and they'll also be adding in what looks to be wheeled support vehicles to go along with this. Now, going forward from 2020, the current roadmap also lays out the devs' plans to add in, for example, flamethrowers and melee weapons at some point. And not just that, but there's also a note about more weapon loadouts that are coming as well, which I've got to admit is another thing that can start to feel a little bit stale as well in the current build. But most importantly, and we've known that this is coming for a while now, the roadmap confirms the Eastern Front is coming next year, which obviously is gonna add in a ton of new content. And obviously it's gonna have to add in some new biomes. So that's good news that at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future, we are gonna get a break from endless French maps. But anyway, just before we finish up, getting back to the original question, obviously most of what we've already talked about in this video is a pretty positive endorsement of the game. But as you know, when it comes to indie multiplayer shooters, the content really isn't the biggest issue. It's trying to keep those servers populated. And so the final point I wanna make is that where so many other promising indie shooters have failed, it looks like Hell Let Loose is actually here to stay, even in smaller regions like Australia, which I'm obviously pretty happy about. Obviously, it's never gonna pull the numbers of a AAA shooter, but in the last year, player counts have actually been increasing, which is really rare for indie shooters. Like I said, I think the big reason for this is because not only is this a great game that actually delivers on what it sets out to achieve, it actually meets the expectations of the player base. The devs are open and honest with the community, and most importantly, they actually get updates out on a regular basis on time. And so I think what's really interesting about this game is that Black Matter aren't retaining players with flashy marketing campaigns or from a live service model, what they're doing is promising players that the next time they'll come back, the game's gonna be better. And that's the reason that you should play Hell Let Loose in 2020. It's money well spent even a year in. The game will be better the next time you play it, and it's gonna be getting better for a long time to come. But anyway, guys, that's just about it for this quick review. So as always, make sure you let me know what you think of this game in the comment section down below. And of course, just remember that anytime we deal with dev blogs in these videos that I leave all the links down below, I can't possibly cover all the details. So if you want more info, please check out those links in the description. As always though, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and please feel free to check out the links in the description if you wanna see any more of these videos. And also don't forget you can find my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you wanna keep in touch. And as always, until next time, see you later and have a good one.